music can provoke change because it spreads ideas in a way where you can keep hearing the ideas over and over again without pain. That's what I always thought. Somewhere in the 60s, I think, because we were Quaker and followed the civil rights movement and the peace movement, I think, and I was such a folky from the time I was eight or nine, you know, Joan Baez was my hero and Bob Dylan, and I knew all about the civil rights marches and I was too young to go. And I think I heard about them, the Staples Singers, in relation to the civil rights movement first. And then I got, why am I treated so bad? Uh, I bought that record as a teenager and just, I've never heard harmonies as wonderful as that. I think that the Staples being so closely aligned with the civil rights movement at a time when the whole country was becoming aware of it, there's never been a more perfect marriage than the Staples and Bob Dylan to political causes. All those entertainers that, that were in the civil rights era and the Harry Belafontes, the Dr. Kings, the Staples singers, you know, the, the Bob Dylans, they were all like in their 20s and 30s. And they decided that they would be different from their predecessors and they would be forward in the change, changing of the world. So it was a natural thing, and even though they've known each other since they were kids, but as they were adults, they really relished into being adults that could make a change as adults and change the world as adults. And I was engaged, got engaged in the movement when I was 20 years old, uh, in the sit-in movement first, and then in the larger movement that the sit-ins prompted, and have been engaged in it one way or the other ever since. And music was always a part of that, that movement. I worked for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, and we were incapable of having any activity that doesn't always include singing. Uh, it was just the one thing went with the other. I'm just surprised, really, t that today that's no, no longer a really important part of the movement because it meant so much to us to sing these songs. It pulled us together. In the civil rights movement in particular, and in the labor movement, and in the peace movement, I think that the songs that came out of the 50s and 60s, like Woody Guthrie's in the 30s and 40s, I mean, the labor organizing movements, um, I think those were crucial parts of moving massive amounts of people to be able to be aware of the issue. There's a fine art to, to doing music that's political, as there is spiritual. and. Um, the Staples have never had a problem with, I mean, some of the most profound messages are in oh, respect yourself, you know. He, they really came up with something that was across the board, unarguably relevant to everybody, regardless of what your political, it's not a political position, it's a human rights and a spiritual right. You know, those records don't go away. Um, they, they, don't, they don't disappear from people's souls and minds. Not those records, There's some records do. Not those records. You know, Respect Yourself is one of those, it's like, it's... She's going to carry on. She's going to struggle on. She's going to be singing this music, both these new songs and these old songs, and saying to, to you, the listener, this is what I'm all about. Pay attention now, because this needs to be heard. And uh, it, it, you need to pay attention to it, because this is part of you. And unless you make it part of you, you're missing something terribly, terribly important.